Alrighty, it's time to get going on my live stream. And I thought I would start with a title slide, you know, so it looks like a talking. I know it doesn't sound good. So it looks like a talking version of the thumbnail and stuff. I thought that would be kind of a cool way to start. So we're going to go ahead and start that way. All right. So enough of that. Today, as you saw from the title slide, I'm going to be talking about live stream uh, or rather video editing on today's live stream learning. So video editing. So I'm doing a three week personal project. The personal project is all about helping photographers. And my goal uh, is just to give all kinds of good information. Hey, Kevin, thanks for coming by. Give good information about what's going on to be able to help photographers. It might have to do with the technology, places to learn, ways to sell, things like that. Hey, Anthony, welcome to the live stream. So today, I want to talk to you guys about video, because that's what I'm doing all week this week. I'm in week three of my three weeks of helping photographers every day. And I want to talk to you about video editing, because that seems to be a roadblock for a lot of people. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming in. Um, yeah, it is evening here, so good evening. And I'm sure it's really late other places. A little bit earlier other places so thank you guys for coming in from all over the world okay so editing let's deal with this there are a few different things that you can do as you're getting into this video thing one of them would be um, and, and you want to do this with your earliest videos you want to tinker with it and see do you want to be the video editor because maybe you don't maybe that's just your roadblock maybe your thing is yeah you're a photographer absolutely you edit with Lightroom or Photoshop or both and you just want to limit it to that and you wouldn't mind capturing video of some of your clients or doing some different things like that but you just don't want to tackle learning video editing and I don't blame you it can be really really intimidating it can be overwhelming and it also can be incredibly resource intensive so it could require like a, a serious workstation and 32 gigs of RAM and lots of space maybe a two terabyte um, SSD drive or something crazy like that so it can get really intensive and then you got to have all those backup hard drives and stuff but we're going to talk about a couple of different options and how you could if you really want to get into it uh, and then also some workarounds for it so uh, the first workaround is hire somebody and I'm not <laughs> here's the catch I'm not talking about go to a local place that does video production hey Sherry nice to have you in um, I'm not talking about that because if you go to a local video place they're gonna charge you what the local video editing rate is and that gets really expensive I'm talking about maybe go to Upwork or some kinda uh, one of those help desk kind of places that you can hire some freelancers and you want to do this early before you're actually doing paid projects for clients you want to do it with some of your experimental stuff and see where you can give somebody some footage maybe footage that you shot of yourself in your own studio saying hey you know come uh, listen to or rather pay attention to the kind of photography I do and here's some tips and tricks and stuff like that and then give your videos to somebody that potentially could help you out at a very low affordable rate maybe the person's overseas or something like that and see if you can't get some very reasonable virtual assistance in editing your video lots of different places to go for that I don't do that so I don't have a lot of oh yeah this is a good place to go that's a bad place to go I don't have a lot of those kind of tips and tricks because I do my own editing and I'll talk to you about that and what choices that I made and also a transition I'm making uh, in the very near future so there is that now there's also well years ago when I was working in the video industry and we had a top-of-the-line video production company where I was working in the studio uh, there were a lot of people editing with Final Cut from Apple the problem happened when Final Cut did a major update to their software and they made a lot of things change so retroactive um, you know going back to old files didn't work right uh, the new things things that used to work and things that did work for a very long time stopped working this is the key Apple has done that a bunch of times I like Apple I own Apple products I do not trust Apple software for my production 
I don't trust Apple software because what Apple does is they keep adding features and functions and features and functions. And then they get to a point where they're like, man, we're really tired of supporting this. Let's change it totally. Screw up everybody who's already relying on it, understands the workflow, change the way it works, change the way it functions. Well, that's what they did with Final Cut. And by the way, they've done it with just about everything. Uh, they did it with iMovie. They did it with a ton of their software, but they did it with Final Cut. And so a whole bunch of people, and mainly the people in the video industry, abandoned Final Cut. And everybody went to Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I used to edit in Premiere back at version 4. And so I was decent at Premiere, and then I got away from it. And then um, I have gone back to it to a degree. But here's the thing with Premiere. We used it a lot in the studio because it was a reliable, robust, could do everything video editor. And it worked really nice with the special effects software that we used from Adobe as well. Here's the problem it is hugely resource intensive. And as you're doing some of these edits and you want to see how something you just did works, you have to render it. You're like, I want to see what that transition looks like. Sorry. Can't show you the preview of the transition. It's not going to show up. Uh, the problem is that uh, you've got to render it. So very, very frustrating. Don't want to do that. Um, the other thing is I don't want to buy a very, very expensive workstation from Apple and pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get a little bit more editing functionality than what I can do without Premiere Pro. Now, I'm not saying Premiere Pro is bad. It's the industry leader. It's the thing that all the pros are using, or many of the pros are using at the high end. Films are being edited on this, movies, um, TV commercials, just all kinds of stuff. Ad agencies use it, but they also have a real investment in the gear and in workstations. And I can't really justify going that direction. So let me tell you my workaround. For years, I have been using a program, Mac-only program, called ScreenFlow. I got into ScreenFlow because it is a screen recording application. So I was doing teaching. I was doing training. I was teaching, ironically, Photoshop and Lightroom and Canon software and things like that on my Mac. And I could do screen capture while I was narrating the screen capture. And you could see what all was going on on the screen. And it lets you edit a lot of cool stuff in post. But... ScreenFlow is so much more of a video editor. So even when I'm not doing screen capture, I do stand-up videos where I'm in front of the camera, reading from a teleprompter, doing some teaching, doing some instruction, things like that. I edit all that in ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow does green screen if you want to do green screen and color keying and things like that. And then you can bring in the screen captures if you've got those going on. ScreenFlow is very affordable. It's like under 150 bucks and when you're getting used to it, because it's really fairly easy and straightforward to learn, but if if you want a, a safety net as you're getting used to learning it, 30 bucks a year and you get tech support on the freaking phone. I was using that for a couple of years where I bought the software and I've, I've been using it for a lot of years. And so I upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. But one time I ran into a problem. I'm working on a, a project for a client and I needed help. I'm like, yeah, I'll pay 30 bucks to get a year's worth of tech support and back and forth emails with a, a tech support person. So ScreenFlow from a company called Telestream, I think, uh, but ScreenFlow it has just been great. So I use ScreenFlow for screen capture and for my video editing. And I can do some amazing things. And I can do lower thirds like what you see here. And I just can do all kinds of stuff with ScreenFlow. And that's what I've been using for a lot of years. But I'm going to be changing that soon. What I'm going to be using really soon is Adobe Premiere Rush. A lot of people are shortening that to just Adobe Rush. And here's the deal. It's a very simple, bare-bones when I say bare bones, I mean, it's not complicated. It's really kind of straightforward video editor, but it works on your Mac. It works on PCs. It works on your iPhone, on your iPad. And when you choose to save your files to the cloud, you can open it on your Mac, do some editing, open it on your iPad, do some editing. And the editing capabilities of the program pretty robust, pretty serious stuff. And it's got a whole bunch of things like some built-in titles and lower thirds, like stuff like this is a lower third. And by the way, this lower third, pay attention to this one because 
anything that I'm teaching or I have taught over the past three weeks and I'm teaching again today, if you miss any of my live streams, my Facebook lives, those are re purposed, republished over here on uh, the YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Larry Becker. Uh, so in any case, I'm going to learn, and this is just a, a personal project for myself, I'm going to learn Adobe Premiere Rush because I'm already a creative cloud subscriber. I get access to Rush for no extra charge. I like the idea of being able to edit on multiple machines and share the files across multiple machines. And I really like the work environment and the fact that you don't need a monster computer with tons and tons of um, workspace and lots of RAM and stuff like that. So I'm going to see how well it works. I do not have uh, a recommendation yet other than, hey, if you're just getting into it, maybe try it out. Um, so I'm going to be getting into Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, here's my recommendation. I recommend that you don't use Photoshop. I've tried editing videos in Photoshop, and I've had some success, but more than anything, I've had failures with with it, it would like crash. And I, I've never had Photoshop crash when I'm working on photos. I mean, I, I guess maybe once in a blue moon, but I mean, it just doesn't regularly not work. It always works. It's reliable. I've been using Photoshop for years. And then all of a sudden when I'm doing video, like stuff that I want to do, 50% of them don't even work. So yeah, I'm, I'm staying away from Adobe Photoshop for video editing. But I am going to try out Premiere Rush or Adobe Rush or Adobe Premiere Rush or whatever you want to call it because it works on all those different platforms. And if you haven't ever edited any video, and this is going to be a project that you say, yeah, you know what? Larry's probably right. I probably can do some video. I probably ought to do a little bit of video to promote myself and my, my clients. Hey, Jay, thanks for checking in. Um, then check out Premiere Rush. So yeah. Hey, Steve, nice of you to stop by as well. So Premiere Rush, maybe, or Adobe Rush, or Adobe Premiere Rush, uh, is going to be something to try out. So if you're just tinkering, you're doing a little bit of video capture, a little bit of trial and error, see how it works out for you, try Adobe Premiere Rush and see how that works out for you. So that's all I've got for you today. Again, remember, uh, not that, remember this, that youtube.com slash Larry Becker is where you can watch all these replays if you missed the beginning of this. The cool thing about when I put it on YouTube, and, and I know I'm a little bit late, I'm a day or two late on putting up some of my archives, but when you watch stuff on YouTube, you can watch it back at double speed. When I see people have training videos that show up on Facebook, I'm like, oh darn, I can't go do a double speed playback. I love watching videos fast because I want to consume, I want to get it done. Uh, so I'll put these up over on um, YouTube as well. Now, one last thing I want to remind you, if, if you're a photographer into video at all, you need to check out this ebook. Okay. And you can print it out and make it really pretty like this if you want. But the ebook that I wrote is six profitable video recipes. There's it's free. You can just go and download it and you download it from here and you have to spell it exactly this way. It has to be bit.ly slash capital V, capital R on recipes, all one word. So yeah, try that and you're going to try it out, Sherry. Uh, you're going to try out Premiere Rush. Yeah, it should be good. I actually uh, found a couple of videos from my, from my friend Terry White. So go to YouTube and then do a search for Terry White. Premiere, or rather Adobe Rush or Adobe Premiere Rush. I don't remember what I did the search for, but I found two 38, 35 minute long training videos. Terry's a great trainer and it's for people that are just getting into editing video for the very first time. Or if you're into video editing, uh, you might enjoy that. So hopefully that'll help. Hey Rob, nice to have you in and I hope to have you on the podcast soon. I, that's very cool that I saw that email between you and Rick. So I'm looking forward to that. I always appreciate having your insights and wisdom as you know. All right, gang, that's what I've got for today. So if you haven't downloaded my ebook, that's where you can go to get it. If you have any questions for me, my email address is hi, Larry. Hey, Margaret. Um, yeah. See you and everyone in five weeks. Yes, it is a countdown. I, I made my airline reservations. I can't wait to get out there to Photoshop world. Um, okay. So my email address is hi, Larry at Larry TV. Feel free to shoot me a note, ask me questions, send me comments, updates, uh, 
tell me how my video was awesome or terrible or whatever. I'll look for your emails to hi Larry at LarryBecker.tv until tomorrow when I will continue my three weeks of helping photographers every weekday. That'll wrap this week on the video topic. And then I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next week. So that might be a good thing to do. Shoot me an email to hi Larry at LarryBecker.tv and tell me what kind of stuff do you want me to talk about? Do you want me to go back to some of the stuff I used to do in the Kelby days where I would do Larry's cheap shots and show you inexpensive ways to uh, do all kinds of things in photography? Or do you want to learn about something else or hear tips and tricks or whatever? Let me know. Hi, Larry at LarryBecker.tv. That's it for today. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. See you next time.